All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dead Ball TV. Today's episode is all about Group B at the Copa America. If you haven't seen Group A, you need to pause this video and go check out that one first. Then come back here and also grab a popcorn because these videos tend to be very, very long. I would be shocked if we do not hit the hour mark in this video. Y'all wanted longer videos? Well, here they are. Y'all wanted here longer videos and here we are. I'm giving you all like a tenth of my entire day just to sit down and bang this out. So, Oh, a tenth? With all the research, I'm giving y'all half a day, literally. Oh, no, the research, I could write a book. I mean, this is a mm -hmm. Bible. I have a Bible in front of me. I, I can't wait to look at this a year from now and be like, oh, my God. Yeah. I can't wait to look back and be like, I could not have been more wrong in my predictions. <laughs> I mean, like, Dude, that's, that's gonna I happen Mexico tomorrow. taking nine, bro. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, what was going on? Bro, what, was, what was I smoking, dude? I mean, that Guatemalan. I mean, the coffee here is strong. I'm sure everything else is pretty strong, too. Uh, so we need you guys. Jamaica pack is what you were doing. I pray we smoke that Jamaica pack come the summertime. So that live stream is going to be bonkers. And we are doing live streams for literally every single game at the Copa America. So hit subscribe. Not just live streams, but obviously this is just Group B. We got Group C next, then Group D. And then we got some secret stuff. I can't even speak on that yet. Dropping on the channel only here on Depot TV, the best place on YouTube for Copa America coverage. How was that? Should I clip that and send it to Fox Sports? I feel like that was good. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox Sports. But shoot, they might hit you up. Hey, well, dude, I would sign a five-year deal right now. Let's do it. I'll be the Michael Richards to your Kate Abdo. You bring Ooh. all the real stuff, and I'll just, mm. I'll just clown. <laughs> dude, that, that, honestly, they need they need our show as a foil to they like do. something more professional they really really do and you guys let them know that let fox sports know that let fubo know that by leaving a like on the video and dropping your thoughts down below i'll, like I'll sell out tonight tonight you know we you know we'd be smoking on that dubai pack that qatar pack the I'm instant waiting, the instant i get an offer i'm changing colors you ain't never gonna mm -hmm. see an Argentina jersey again. <laughs> I'm gonna Dude. be wearing Qatar red for the next 20 years. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna have that custom Akram Afif jersey so quick. Y'all are not ready. Like Dude, yes. Look look at this. Y'all really are not. This will never show up on the channel again. Never again. No. It'd be the Qatar Unless Greg guy. Abbott sponsors the channel. You guys know this is a right wing podcast. It's we already mentioned. <laughs> We already mentioned one team in this intro, and that's the team we're going to start with in this video, and that is the Reggae Boys of Jamaica. Quick facts, quick maths about the Jamaican national team. This will be their third ever Copa America. They were at the 2015 and the 2016 editions of the tournament. They have never won a game in their six group stage matches at the Copa America. In fact, they've lost all six, not even a draw in there. Um, Connor, let's get into some players that we think the audience should watch out for at this Copa America because this is a very stacked Jamaican squad at least on paper uh yeah it is a very stacked Jamaican squad now whether or not they show up is totally a different question that's a different discussion so Completely. I would say I would say that the players to watch are all of the stars right you could you could say okay fantastic I'm gonna say though the players to watch are the ones that I'll be interested as to whether or not they show up is the entire starting 11 from their last game that we saw from mm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's who I want to see. I've never seen Jamaica play like that in their life. They were causing chaos. They were confusing. The tactics looked pretty sound. They held a decent formation. It wasn't incredible. It was not incredible. No. But it was a decent no. formation. And they just looked like some dogs. You saw athleticism on display. And frankly, the stars aren't doing them any favors like now, nor historically have they. So, shoot, bring them in. Bring them in. Pull them up. I want to see those fellas. I want to see the fellas who are trying to run for their country. You know, Lord knows if they're getting paid. Probably not, but no, they, they want to make an impression. So, get them in because they seem to have more time. And you know what? That's not even a slight to the players That's a or the stars that aren't showing up. That's a slight to the organization. You're not fostering an yep. environment that European base players want to come and play in. I know that can be difficult, but like how many grievances is it that you've got fellas dropping out or catching illnesses right before they go in? I, I don't know if I buy all that. So that to me, that that's what I'm worried about. The players to watch mm -hmm. directly correlates to the organization. 
to me. Okay. I do like highlighting the the non-stars for this Jamaican team because I feel like the the flashy names, right? That's what everybody pays attention to. And they don't really look at the rest of the team. And that's why I'll start with one of my Jamaican players to watch who is not a star, but absolutely should be. And that is the Jamaican Sergio Ramos, the Bombaclat bomber, Damian Mother Effin Low, bro. One of my favorite players in all of world football. This man is a menace. And I swear to God, if he didn't play in the MLS and if he wasn't Jamaican, y'all would be putting more respect on my man. Because this dude is a freak. He is a freak. He is a menace. And if Jamaica are going to pull a Cinderella run at this Copa America, it's going to be because Damian Lowe is averaging nine successful slide tackles per match. That's how it's going to go down. He cannot play poorly in Jamaica advance. You could argue he might be the most important player. Now, I will have five Jamaican, we'll have a Jamaican panel, bro, live on Dead Ball TV. We'll make it a live stream, and I will debate five to six different Jamaican creators on Dead Ball TV that Damian Lowe is the biggest key to their success as an individual player. I swear, man. Let me take the glasses back off, bro. I'm not playing games. <laughs> We're not playing I'm not around. playing games, dude. I think, I think there I, are, I find it hard to argue with that. I, w- I was thinking, I was thinking, what is a game in which Damian Lowe didn't step up and Jamaica still won? Not counting a game against Nicaragua, with all due respect. And again, if he wasn't an MLS player, everybody would be like, yo, this man should sign to whatever the hell. You know, it's like going from Char- Charmander to Charizard, bro, with Damian Lowe in and out of the reggae boys team. So he's like my first individual that I want to highlight. Do you have another individual or did have, you just go collectively I have like the no nine guys? Individuals. I didn't want to pull another Argentina where I named the entire starting eleven. <laughs> didn't want to do that. <laughs> did lots of groupings okay. here. That's fair. I'm I'll go on to my second one though. And that is not the player many are expecting me to say, which is probably Leon Bailey. And I do think Leon Bailey, absolute class season right now in Aston Villa. Especially but after the today. guy nominated. Oh my lord. Yeah, no, I mean he's he's balling out. He's he's I mean, he, balling he out. Just, he literally he just he won Manchester City the Premier League today. Yeah. Yes. He, he he looked at Christian Pulisic having a comeback season. He said, That's cute. Let me double your stats in the Prem. He did. He did. <laughs> And there's nothing that U.S. Men's National Team Twitter can say about that. Well, at least I hope not. They'll probably come up with something. But the player that I want to nominate next to Damian Lowe is Damari Gray. All right. And Mm -hmm. there will be discussions about Damari Gray because my man chased the bag and he went to the Saudi League. And you know what? Maybe he wouldn't do that if the Jamaican FA paid their players. We'll get into that later. But he chased the bag, went to Saudi Arabia. Let's put that to the side for a second. For the reggae boys. This man is their most dangerous offensive player, and he has been that since he debuted. 11 games, 5 goals, 3 assists for the national team. Unbelievable clip. He has not had a bad game, I don't even think, for Jamaica yet in 10 caps. Excuse me, 11 caps. I'm trying to think of an instance. Maybe he showed up somewhere subpar, but I can't can't put my finger on the exact place. But I think you're right on the whole. I think you're right on the whole. It's very hard to find consistency in the Jamaican national team outside of big stars don't perform well, and for him to be the exception there, spot on. I like how you said that. He's probably the only Jamaican star who is consistent. Yeah. And you know what? There's there's your uh, U.S. men's national team Twitter argument against uh, Leon Bailey. Christian Pulisic puts the badge on. <laughs> They're going to be like, look at the Nations League. And tell me, look at what he's just not clear. <laughs> like, have you seen his goal against Mexico? That's going to be literally the, the argument against all the individual achievements of Leon Bailey so far this season. Um, and uh, also, I couldn't say Leon Bailey yeah. because as of time of recording, I'm, I'm pretty sure my man is retired from Jamaica. Yeah. So do we talk about him that much? I, I feel like Dude, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, do you have any more stars? Because we can just go right into the FA if you want. Andre Blake, King of Kingston, 
33 years old. He's going to need to have a big tournament. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Got to take care of his knees. Got to mm-hmm. take care of his knees. Um, all right, uh, moving into the FA. Yeah, Leon Bailey's out. We had uh, your boy, uh, Mikel Antonio. No show last time. And Embarrassing. I think I think Ravens Medical shouted it out uh, during the actual game that he was injured, or that somebody was injured, and that that's why they weren't showing up. Yes, yes, and no. I just don't feel like they want to. They don't want to take that effort. Their clubs are like, if you're not going to go over there and do anything, if your heart's not in this, like, just just stay home. And that's wild, but I I think it's indicative of what the FA has created over there. They don't have an environment that you know provides what the players need to perform at their best or to feel at home. You know, if a player feels more comfortable staying an ocean away rather than coming back to their hemisphere, Mm -hmm. that's an issue. That's an issue. That's a massive issue. And what the the main factor is they're just not paying their players, right? It is not collecting the bag. I'm sure that there's logistic disasters. In no, there. no, 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 no. It is far more than just not paying the players. I mean, if you're going to have your star player, Leon Bailey, sit down and do a 45-minute interview about why he's stepping away, you know, you know crap has been bad for a while. That yep. doesn't just happen after one international win. Leon Bailey didn't show up, see that his you know breakfast had one egg less than what he usually asked for, and then he said, you know what? I'm going to retire and do a sit down interview. This has been happening since he made his debut. And I think he's justified in and doing what he did. Now, I don't know Leon Bailey personally. He seems like a chill dude. I don't think he'd be so much of a prima donna to just explode after a small incident. But he's talking no payments. He's talking flight issues, hotel issues. They don't even have the men's jerseys available when he shows up for training. They have the women's jerseys for the male players. They don't have balls on the pitch to practice with the jamaican fa is an embarrassment now it's not the biggest embarrassment of an fa in this group in fact this group is a cesspool (laughs) we're going to get into the others yeah oh it's a cesspool it's a cesspool (laughs) but you you, you've you've ignited a a flame here with the things that we don't like about jamaica are we doing that before the the pros we're going negatives first being the yeah let's go negative first let's go negatives first okay Okay, we've already touched on the FA. You got another negative about Jamaica? Something that's a concern you want to highlight? Oh, oh dog. Okay, so <laughs> this is <laughs> this is just one of my – you said fun facts. I've got a couple of them myself. I'm taking a page out of your book. I want you to guess this millennium, this millennium, yeah. 2001 and on, how many times do you think they've beaten Mexico? I'm going to say they've beaten Mexico twice. Three times, but they've played okay. 18 games. They have four draws and 11 losses. This millennium. We do we do very well against Jamaica. And I know that Mexico's recent form is questionable. We will get into that. I promise you we will get into that. Y'all want to hear about that? We'll get into it. Mm-hmm. But that's a bad record. That's a bad record. Like, the idea for CONCACAF teams coming into the Copa is that, okay, we can be competitive against our guys that we play against so we can take a point, and then hopefully we get some weaker CONMEBOL guys. Okay, you got a weaker CONMEBOL guy in this group. But if you're expecting to steal points against Mexico with that kind of record, I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. I I don't see it happening here. I do not. And Mexico is in a sorry state. They are still better than Jamaica, I think. We down bad. I think. 100%. I think that Jamaica just doesn't have the gumption to to rally their guys. You know, the only squad that I've seen that can be competitive against even, even a disastrous Mexican squad was the squad of newbies that we saw against the U.S. That's what I'm hoping for. I mean, Damari Gray going to have to deadlift the entire squad and then somehow get them up onto his shoulders. Because I, I yeah. just I just really don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. With a record like that, and then you're going into tournament style football, one in which Mexico is pedigreed? No. No, 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 no. Nope. All right. All right. It's it's buffet time, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button, sit down, because I'm I'm going in. I'm Jamaica. I'm wearing stretchy pants. I'm wearing stretchy pants because I'm ready to eat. 
No belts today. Bro, I'm, I got my slides on here. I'm comfortable. I'm, uh -huh. And I'm about to get even more comfortable dropping these facts on y'all. Let's go. Jamaica, their all-time record against Conmebol. We're still in the negatives. Eight wins, six draws, 28 losses. It's not good. It's not they good. Came here, they came here to collect a bag. That is it. And some L's. Yes. Woo! Yes. Jamaica's last win against a Conmebol team was May 2016 when they beat Chile 2-1. to one. We're, we're going back eight years for their last, com their last win, excuse me, against a Conmebol team. In competitive matches, they have never beaten a Conmebol team. <laughs> that, is, that is a travesty. That is a travesty. Yeah. And you know what? This this isn't the squad to do it. This isn't the squad to do it. Well, I know the negative, bro. They look better without their best players. You already said that. You said that probably the best you've seen them look or the most like threat that they would have against a team like Mexico was the squad that we saw at the Nations League without a lot of their best players. What are you going to do when the Copa America comes around? Are you not going to call up some of these best players? Is Leon Bailey going to stay retired? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Damari Gray didn't even play against the U.S. because he was suspended. Does, does adding him back to the mix, a player who's pretty lazy, I'm not going to lie, and doesn't want to press, does that completely destroy the, I would say, tenacious defensive performance that we saw from Jamaica? Can they play like that with Damari Gray in the lineup? I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to introduce these good players, and then you're going to go into a Copa America, a tournament that you've never won a game in, and then the CONCACAF team that's also in your group is a team that you've been owned by. And the, and the Reggae Boys fans watching want me right now to say in the video, they've taken six points in advancing? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not, bro. Another one. Where's the big win? Where's Where the big win? is the signature win? I'm tired of waiting. What is it? Is it Panama 1-0 in a Nations League third place game? This isn't hate. This is facts. Where is it? We still talk in Canada 3-2. We're going to be talking about the Canada 3-2 win in 2045. I'm sorry, bro. It's not enough. No. Nope. It's not enough and it hasn't been enough. Mm -mm. Dude, it's... The Jamaican team, this is a very talented team, but their their backroom issues, their lack of experience against Conmebol, it, it's going to sink them. Like, I, I was looking at even Andre Blake, right? Captain of the team, 69 caps, smash the like button for the national team. How many games do you think he has against Conmebol teams in his international career? Andre Blake. 69 games. How many of those are against Conmebol teams? 10. <laughs> You fool. Four. Four games against Gumbable teams. Not only is it just four, they've lost all four games. And they've scored one goal. I mean, what do y'all want us to say? I'm sorry. You know what? Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, because the Reggae Boys Twitter is a little too raucous over there. Y'all need to humble yourselves. Yeah. It's a promising team, but y'all have done nothing. It's been a promising team. It's been a promising team. We've said our fair share of positives about Jamaica, but there's there's only so much that you can take. Like, I, I can't get my hopes up anymore. No. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm, and I'm getting there with Venezuela. We'll get into them, but I can't. I can't keep getting my hopes up. I'm very scared that there's going to be a Peru-like situation where there's promise and there's hope, but loss after loss after loss, dropped ball after drop ball after drop ball, lack of results is just going to wear down, and it's going to crumble. I'm scared. I'm scared of that. I know, I know that the Jamaican FA is not listening to us, but somebody has to tell them, you are going to fumble this bag. All of these promising players are on their way out. Not all of them, but they will be soon. These years fly by. These years fly by. There goes another Nations League. There goes another Copa America. You got two, three years. Mikel Arteta, or Mikel Arteta, la concha de su... Uh, <laughs> Mikel Antonio, uh, he's not going to be there at the next Copa. Because what is he, 30, 
33? Maybe. 33? Yeah. Yeah. Going on the mid 30s now. Going on the mid 30s. Come on now. Come also, on now. what what has he done? What has he, 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 he had done? He against the United States for Jamaica. What has he done? It, it the, the thing that pisses me off about Jamaica and Jamaican fans is it's all this hypothetical bull jive. That's all it is. They're theory crafting 24 seconds. Well, if the wind wasn't blowing so hard against Mexico when they get, I don't care, bro. I don't care. Oh, well, this, this, this should have been a penalty. Y'all got an excuse, bro. You're like my ex. You got five excuses for every single thing and zero accountability. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Win a game at this Copa America. And you know what? If you do, I'll be the first person here and I'll be saying congratulations to Jamaica. I have nothing against the Jamaican national team. There is no vendetta, but y'all have done nothing, and y'all talk a lot. Y'all talk a lot. So it's time. It's time to see something. I do want to say positive things about this team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, on paper, this is a very strong team. It ain't as strong as y'all think, but it's very, very strong. We do. We we we've mentioned this just in our defense, devil's advocate to all this negative buffet that we've been feeding that because you know we love our seat at that table. But it is a very competitive lineup on paper. You look at them, you've got to say, oh, some of these guys have great FIFA scores. Oh, I'm gonna be looking at these guys on Football Manager, right? Mm -hmm. Whether or not they deliver is a different question. Sorry, carry on. Positives. I was thinking about this. I don't think that Jamaica has too much pressure. Would Would you agree with that? And chat, l let me know as well. It's Jamaica. I think I, I think I might have to agree with you, right? You get pressure from the Jamaican fans, but they are nowhere near as toxic as Mexican fans. I don't think the expectation is entirely too high, at least not from my end. Correct us if we're wrong in the comments. Mm -hmm. Throw your opinions out. I want to hear them. Yeah, yeah I yeah. want to know. Please more. disagree. I, I want to get some. I, I want to get my finger on the pulse here. Somebody give me something here. But I, I'm not feeling too much expectation from this. Never won a game here in the Copa America. Trash against Comebol teams. Trash record. What is there to expect? You're expecting a Cinderella run from these guys. This isn't March Madness. I know we're fresh out. This is not March Madness. You're not playing against other college teams or other young teams that are going to make mistakes and such. This That ain't how the world of football works. You're going against no. in the Conmebol. We've talked about it. The Asian Cup is impressive, okay? AFCON is impressive. They are both respectable, honorable tournaments, and I love to watch them. Conmebol is a different beast. Conmebol is a different beast. If you get, if, if you get the cream of the crop technically in Europe... You get the cream of, I don't even know, bad attitudes and just vitriol on the pitch here in Conmebol. I don't think this is the tournament that is, or this is a tournament that is conducive to Cinderella runs. You know what? Not even I think. It's not. It's not that tournament. So, no, no. I don't think the expectation is large for them here. I don't think they have any pressure, which could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. I don't know personality-wise in Jamaica what there is on this team to decide whether or not that's a good or bad factor, which throw that on the negative list. They just brought a new tray out to the buffet. I didn't even know they had it. I didn't see it on the menu. It's a chef special tonight. There's no personality mm -hmm. to this team. There's no defining characteristic, no trait, no Sergio Ramos, like you said, to say here is our anchoring personality trait that we are going to hang on to. I could not tell you what it is outside of athleticism. Yes. The the trademark of this team is we could be good. We like could that be good. Is, that's the personality of Jamaica. And to add on to that, what you said about the Copa America, you might not be in a group that is extremely successful at the Copa America, but every single team in Jamaica's group is going out there to kill somebody and they're going out there to make history for their prospective national teams. And let me just say this again, last thing we should say about Jamaica and then we should move on. Venezuela, Venezuela, I believe have one semifinal in their history. Ecuador, I believe have two semifinals in their history. We're talking like 20 and 30 appearances at the Copa America all time, respectively, for both teams. And y'all think Jamaica, in their third appearance, is just going to show up against one of the best Ecuador teams of all, of all time. 
and a damn good Venezuela side. And y'all just gonna y'all just gonna walk into the quarterfinal? No. No. That's not how that works. I'm sorry. Unfortunately. I'm sorry. That's that's not how that works. For the ceiling and floor for the reggae boys, obviously the floor is the group stage. What would you go with the ceiling? Do you think it is quarterfinals for Jamaica at the Copa America? <laughs> I think the ceiling is that they get a freak win against Venezuela. Three points to me, for me as well. Three points is the ceiling, the absolute ceiling. Mm-hmm. As is going now, they have a terrible, terrible, horrible, awful, no good, very bad, bad record against comable teams. We've had a couple of acts of God recently. There's been an earthquake in New York, and there was a solar eclipse. Insane happenings. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to take even more than that, an additional act of God, a miracle, if you will, for them to score a goal. And if they do it, I think they do God. it against Mexico. I don't think they score against Ecuador, and I don't think they score against Venezuela. Oh, I actually, for some weird reason, I feel like their best game is going to come against Ecuador. I just have a feeling. I think so too. I I just have, and I told I told Martin from Ecuador Heroes. I I told him that as well. I said, watch out! Don't be surprised if Jamaica have the game of their lives and have like a one-one draw against you. I'm just saying. Um, Let let's move it on to Ecuador for the sake of time because we did just talk for 30 minutes about Jamaica. Uh, So. (laughs) <laughs> Let's move it on to Ecuador, who are currently fifth in World Cup qualifying in Comnebol. They have three wins, two draws, and one loss from six games. Only five goals scored. We'll get into that a little bit later. This will be their 30th ever Copa America. And as I mentioned earlier, they've only made the semifinals of this tournament twice in their history. Now, this is probably the most stacked Ecuador side maybe ever. Ecuadorians, let us know in the comments how you feel about that. But, Connor, who is a player to watch from this Ecuador side at the Copa, in your opinion? I want to know what Caicedo is going to do. I want to know what Moises has got in the bag because for Chelsea, there hasn't been much to write home about lately. Um, I think towards the beginning of the Premier League season, uh, even though there weren't results flowing in from him, I think he was still a very competent player on the pitch, but I think he's been losing a little bit of favor. And I don't, I don't know what he's going to deliver. Now, I think when he does put on the Ecuador jersey, he is one of the players that is willing to run out and play for the badge. And it makes me feel good watching. I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. This guy is good. He can deliver. He's got it in his bag. But I want to know what he does when big tournament comes around because this is his first showing as an international superstar, like super, superstar, right? Yeah, World Cup is probably I guess you can say the World Cup. It's a little too soon. He was still a young, young. It feels a little too young. Now he's a leader on the team. He's got the big contract. He's got the big paycheck. He's got the big club. We need to see some results. Let's start backing it up. And in that same bag, I'm going to put Estupinian, or I was going to put Estupinian until he got hurt yesterday. He got That's injured. big problem, injured man. 12 minutes into the game, he got injured. He wasn't really delivering before that. He looks competitive defensively, but the offensive production, I mean, he looked like the best left back in the world at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. Five, yeah. six games into the Premier League. A force, a force, and now I don't know. I don't know what's happened. It might be the Brighton yeah. style. It might be a lot of things. I'm not here to uh, throw conjecture into that. All I know is that he has been injured again. I don't know what the gravity of that injury is, but I'm concerned. That's a concern. Yeah, I would. I would say the only problem with the Supinian is game time. I mean, he is yeah. one of the best left backs in world football. There is no problem with the Zerbi. There's no problem with the competition level. It's the fact that this guy is getting non-contact injuries every other game. That's a massive problem. He's 26 years old. You already brought him up. I'm going to also nominate Angelo Preciado, who you guys know I'm a big fan of, because the way that they want to play, they being Ecuador, they need offensive production from their fullbacks. And hilariously, both of them are 26 years old. If it's Tupignan and Preciado, and especially the, the latter, who's a very, very attacking player, if he is not creating chances for this national team, the way that they set up, they are dead food. They need their wingbacks to whip in balls and find the center forwards. That is one of the main ways that this team, if not the main way, that they generate offense. And it's Tupignan's 
debatably the heart and soul of the team. I mean, Dominguez is like one of their most capped players ever, legend for Ecuador at the goalkeeper. But in terms of like guys throughout the rest of the pitch, it's his Stupignan. I, I think Moises is probably their best player. I, no, he is their best player. But his Stupignan is, he's that guy. He's that guy. He's got four goals, four assists for the national team. They've never lost when he's gotten an assist or a goal. They're going to need a big Copa from him. And the fact that he went down again is a big deal, dude. I'd be worried right now. I really I, would. I, dude, I don't know which one's worse. If a new injury came up or if he re-aggravated an old one. I have no idea which one I would take. Because either way, it's a roll of the dice with him, it feels like. Yeah, it is. And I'm telling you now, dude, if he does not start and they have to put in a backup, I, you, genuinely... This is not, not hyperbolic. You you will need to ask me again for a brand new prediction for how this group plays out because I don't think Ecuador can win games without this guy. Like, they probably yeah. would get a couple draws without his stooping on. That is how central he is to them. And, then, and the last player that I want to nominate, and I'm getting a little funky here, but I am going to say Kendry Pies. I'm going to say Kendry Pies, 16 years old, one goal, two assists already, and six caps for the national team. Man of the match against Uruguay. It's interesting with Kendry because on one hand, he is the most creative midfielder that Ecuador has at 16 years old. You can take that how you will. And I think, especially in a game where Ecuador have possession or they're down and they're chasing the game and they need a goal, Pies needs to be on point, dude, in that game. Because otherwise, it's guys like Jose Cifuentes, or guys like Alan Franco who are creating the chances. Franco's a scrub. I'm sorry. He's he's a bad footballer. And Cifuentes, you know, as my Ecuadorian friends know, an athlete perhaps, he ain't a creative midfielder. He's not going to be finding space in, in behind. Kendry Pies is going to have to be that guy, and he's. I hope he's ready to put his his big boy boots on. He certainly was at the strip club when he, when he showed up. So let's hope that he can also, you know, perform – Above it's time for him to show up there, yeah, in in La Cancha as well. So he's my final guy that that I would like to put a giant spotlight on. Not pressure, just a spotlight. I'll put a little pressure on him. You got another player? Yeah, my last one is going to be Ened. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Ened. I mean, if he's the guy up top, even if he's not the first option anymore, which I think I think he probably should be. He's got to be. He's got to be Kevin Rodriguez and that, that decent, fall off the decent car. player. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. But again, that's it's a big ask. Sorry. Go ahead. There are going to be big moments in this tournament where they need him. There's going to be big moments in this tournament where they need him. This is his, this is his Iguain sort of last dance. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. The pressure's going to be on him. And I mean, if he gets a chance, which I think he'll get a couple, you got to put him away. You got to put him away. I don't think he's going to get a lot of them, which is why that touch has got to be magical. It's got to be magical, and he's got to slot them in. You got to get ready mm -hmm. because there really is no other option, especially if Estupiñan is out. You might not even get that many chances anymore. You might get one chance as opposed to that. So if you're Literally. ready to sign off on a good note, potentially your last Copa America, Cowboy, cometh the hour, cometh the man. You got to show up. They need you. So, yeah, I'm going to be watching yeah. him with great interest. I will as well. Ecuador's all-time leading goal scorer with 40. He does have nine goals in his last 20 for the national team, so that's some pretty good form, and they're going to need him. Things that I really, really like about this Ecuador team, without a freaking doubt, the number one thing is how goddamn stacked this defense is. It is the second-best defense in the Americas, Brazil, sit the F down. Uruguay, get out. You're not even invited to the party. It's Ecuador and Argentina, baby. Those are the top two. I'm not having, I'm not entertaining anybody. Else. I swear to God, if I see a Chris Richards comment, I swear to God, if somebody mentions Jedi Robinson in the comments, bro, I'm pulling up, dude. Drop the location, Google Maps. I'm pulling up. I'm in Guatemala right now. I'm booking a flight, bro. That nobody else is touching these boys. It's just you and you being Argentina and Ecuador at the top looking down at the rest. These boys are legit. They are legit. They are legit. 
And I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it one further. I, th- I think they're the best team by far in this group. You want to talk about cesspools of FAs and organizations overall? I think they're overall, okay. In this group, I think they are the best team, and I think it's a pretty significant drop off. Um, period. I can't debate you on that. Period. I cannot I, debate you on that. It's it's very hard to, and that's that's not an easy take. Or that's not a that's not an easy uh, or it's a very easy take to make, right? But like if you look on paper, it it just is what it is, right? We can. We can sing about their defense until the cows come home. But if we're looking at this group specifically, Group B, they're the best. They're the best. Full stop. And we'll get into the other ones. You know, we've already gotten into Jamaica, so you know they're out. We'll get into the other guys. I think from the top of your head, you should know already that they are the best team. They're also organized. I think they're organized. They have a very systematic uh, team, and it is defined by their personality, right? What they do well, they do well, and they stick to those guns, even um, if it means that they're not producing what they need to in games, right? If we're not going to score a bunch of goals, you're not going to score a bunch of goals, period. If it's difficult for us to score through our own fault, that's because it's so difficult for them to score or for them to be scored on, right? Their personality, I think, will carry them far. I think that that is a personality you could sit down, defend, and be proud of, right? The Ecuadorians can sit down and say, on our day, we we might, you know, whatever happens here, your team can't score on us. Whatever happens mm-hmm. here, your team probably can't score on us. You're scared of this defense. You don't want the smoke. And, no, that's, and on their day, they can beat any team day. at this tournament as well. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Jamaica? No. no. No, no, no. You can be on your no, 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 you no, no, can no. be on your month. You can be on your cycle, bro. I don't care what you want. You're not beating Brazil. You're not beating Uruguay. You're not touching Argentina. Like I'm just sorry. Like it it is it is how it is. there's levels to this, okay? In Ecuador, they're just on a different level. Now that level does come with pressure and I'll talk about that when we get into things that we don't like, but you know, pig, piggybacking on on that, the identity of this team, defense first, extremely physical, one of the most physical teams. Very physically imposing i would say at this copa america and since the last copa america this team has conceded more than two goals only twice one of those games was felix sanchez's first game in charge a friendly away to australia and then an away world cup qualifier a disastrous game against paraguay oh i believe pierre and campier also had an own goal okay so Mm -hmm. the offense is not always very fun to watch in fact usually it's garbage But this defense, they're going to keep you in game, dude. It's like the Chicago Bears, Pittsburgh Steelers back in the day, okay? You can have a kind of average quarterback because that defense, they're going to have a pick six. They're going to force two fumbles per game, and they're going to keep things close. That is literally Ecuador, this Copa America. And that is what makes this team so freaking scary. Now, do you even know the positive, or can I I roll out the first thing I don't like about Ecuador? No, rip it. Uh, my positive okay. was going to be that they had a good warm-up window, but I don't think much more needs to be said about that. You getting a rep in against a good team, solid. All right, yeah. Ch- check out our uh, Comable March friendly recap video if you want to hear a twenty-minute segment, literally just about the Italy and Guatemala games. <laughs> the thing that I don't like there's actually a lot of things, not a, not a, not a ridiculous amount, but several things I don't like. Number one, this offense is terrible terrible it's terrible and i think felix sanchez takes too much smoke for that and the reason i'm saying that see i, I called out the jamaicans earlier i got to call out the ecuadorians now y'all gas up some of your players a little too much like yes there is offensive talent in this team absolutely but let us let's not act like y'all are uruguay going forward no you're not let's, even let's, close let's be completely realistic this is my uh, this is my big negative let me let me hop in here they've hop scored in. 10 10 goals in the last 10 games. Okay. Can you really make a negative out of that when we already know that they can't score? Okay, no. But these babies cannot score. Half of those goals came in two games. And those those games were against Costa Rica and Guatemala. Three and two. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. These babies cannot score. They cannot do it. Half of your goals are coming against those guys? No way. In 10 games? 
10 games, half of those, half of your 10 goals are coming in two. That's not good. That's not good. Not good. No, no, it's, it's not good. I mean, in 14 games total under Felix Sanchez, they have 12 goals. So they're not even hitting the one goal per game mark with this guy in charge. And again, it's not all him. He definitely has a substantial portion of the pie in terms of culpability, but also at the same time, you got guys like Gonzalo Plata, who uh, two years ago was one of my favorite players, and now he looks finished. 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 He's in the Qatari Stars League. He literally just got banned. I don't know if the FA banned him. I don't know if Felix Sanchez boss banned him, but the report is him and Roberto Arboleda will never play for Ecuador again while Felix Sanchez is the manager. So he's literally done. And like, he is your second best. I would say he's your second best attacking player. Let me let me let me clarify that. I'm not counting Kendrick Pies. I'm not counting midfielders. I'm counting guys like Kevin Rodriguez, Jeremy Sarmiento, Gonzalo Plata, Ener Valencia, guys like uh uh Angel Mena, guys like that. Like Gonzalo Plata is in the top three of that in terms of of dangerous uh, being dangerous chance creation, and he's done. No Copa America for Gonzalo Plata. Like you and you don't have the depth there. It's not like it's center back. We're genuinely Ecuador's ten deep. They look like a goddamn gang pulling up, bro. They need the minibus just for the center backs on this team alone. It is ridiculous. The center back factory that is going on over there in Quito. I mean, bro, you want to talk about factory? Shout out to Independiente de Valle, baby. Man, the national team built on the back. They rolling them out, dude. Like some fortune cookies, dude. It's insane. It's just a conveyor belt. Yeah. All day, all day, every day. How y'all like that? How y'all like that, man? How y'all like that? My Catolica fans watching right now, huh? What about Nacional? Emelec? Boo. Ugliest jerseys in the league, bro. Anyways. <laughs> Another thing I don't like. Uh-huh. Hype. This team is getting a decent amount of hype, and it's a little Jamaica-esque, bro. It's a lot of, oh, well, on paper we could, but where's the substance? Where is the substance? I don't want to hear about what the team could be doing. I need to see something. I'm I'm totally with you on the hype. It's it's a little bit too much. And dude, you know what we can fall back on? We can fall back on uh or what may happen is the the zeitgeist, the general opinion of Ecuador might fall back on or you could take a look at their trip to the strip club. You could take a look at that. Right there, the night before mm. the game, right around there. I mean, if something goes wrong, you kind of look at that attitude and you're like, okay, maybe the hype is a little bit too much. They think they can just, you know, go and do that the night before and then go stand up business on the pitch. No, James Harden couldn't do it. Lemon Pepper Lou couldn't do it. There's look, there's a ton, there's a ton of examples of this. And I don't know if and they're you're not James point. Harden, bro. You're not James Harden. You're not James Harden. Yes. Thank you for saying that. I was just gonna let that one roll, but You've got to take that into account. That's not the attitude that you can have. You think you are? Potentially. Potentially. I'm not ready to buy into that story yet. But that could be an early indicator. I really, 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 really don't want it to be true. And that's not me defending them going to the club, right? Whatever you do in your spare time, it's not up to me. Mm -hmm. It's not up to me. Your your business is your business. It's not for me. Okay? You, You go do your thing. Whatever you think you're capable of, that's fine. But that message that you what you could glean from that, the fact that you're taking young guys like Kendry to that joint, like mm-hmm. that's a little nerve wracking, you know, and I'm I'm very hesitant. I'm just saying that could be a forerunner. That could be a catalyst. Thank you for bringing that up. I do think you and I are both were like, this isn't a massive deal. No, like the biggest issue for you and I was definitely like Kendry Pies was there, not the fact that like players yes. went to a strip club like this. Bro, Kyle Walker probably there like before the goddamn Manchester Derby, dude. And then he goes out there and locks up Marcus Rashford. Although everybody's locking up Marcus Rashford nowadays. But the point is like players do this stuff, dude. It's it's completely like that's that's just part of the lifestyle. Now for a 16 year old to be there, that's a little effed up. And what that does re- bring into question that you touched on is the culture. The, the culture, culture. Of the team, and I've heard a lot of things, and maybe I will have Martin and, and Seb on to talk about more about the problems, not just with the Ecuadorian national team, but within the the Liga Profesional as well, where it's like these guys are just not role models, and that is evident by the fact that they brought a child to the club, and then when they got called out about it, 
they slap back on the fans on their IG stories. Like that is not. I'm I'm sorry. I, no, no, I, I know no. he he he's like our goat. I wouldn't. I could never imagine Kutu Romero doing that. No, Kutu Romero would never take a 16 year old to a strip club and then call out the Argentine fans who got upset about him. He would never do that because the Kuti, man is a role Kuti, model. Kuti Romero is happily married as well. He's he's at home taking care of his baby. He's got to get all that mm-hmm. them positive vibes out before he goes onto the field and goes Super Saiyan. Mm-hmm. He's got to gather energy. Yes. Frankly, if if I'm the coach, if I'm your guy, if I'm on the team and I'm an experienced player there, if I've got multiple caps, I'm going to look like Roy Keane a little bit. I'm going to be like, I better not see your ass out. You better be mm-hmm. at home getting ready. But again, what they do with their lives is their business, right? Mm-hmm. But it could be an indicator. I'm very, very nervous. Very hesitant. Mm-hmm. It's just a mentality. It's, it's a, a mentality. mentality issue. And I see that, and I just think that, like, okay, the older guys, Dominguez, Valencia, I don't think Valencia was called up in his defense, so I don't think he could have done anything during the last window. But, but still- it makes you think, like, nope, nope. Estupian wasn't called up as well. So it makes you think, like, I'm sorry, is there nobody else? There's not another mature figure in this locker room who's like, wake up, guys. Go, but... Yeah. Chile. Either don't go or leave, uh, leave Kendry Pies. You know who's Nobody not said doing that? this? Chile. Nobody was in the locker room saying, you know what's not happening right now? Gareca doesn't have them out. Oh, Gareca, no. Oh, no. Gareca, no. I mean, absolutely uh, straight not. Straight to the guillotine. Straight Gareca, to the guillotine. Gareca's no got try. ankle tags. He's got ankle tags on the whole team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, you you I mean, don't do that with El Tigre. Like it's done. No. Your international career is done. And they don't have that. And credit credit to Felix Sanchez and the FA because they did suspend two of the players. Okay. Sick. Credit Good. to them. They they took action, but will that fix it? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Oh, oh my bad, my bad. We gotta do floor and ceiling for Ecuador. I'm gonna go floor. I'm gonna say it's the group stage too, dude. Do not be shocked yeah. if this team gets two points and bounces out. I think I'm right there with you. I think I'm right there with you. I mean, they could get, they could score one goal against every single one of these teams, which is above their goal scoring clip. Might I remind you? And they could, Correct. they could crash immediately out. They could crash immediately out. Because you're right, mm-hmm. Jamaica might play the game of their life, and we saw it against the United States. Jamaica causes a little chaos. They use, you know, incredible athleticism to get through. Who knows? Now I think Ecuador's a little. Inc- too good at like set pieces and they're they're dangerous aerially so i don't know how much of an issue that'll be but let's not be surprised let's not be surprised especially if that culture comes into question here i don't know i'm nervous but that is my absolute floor for them groove stage thank you for bringing that up i feel like an idiot last big pro i love about this team is from set pieces they might be like the most dangerous team Mm-hmm. at the Copa. I mean, these center backs, bro, you need you need a cabezazo out of nowhere. You look to an Ecuadorian center back, they're going to give it to you. I mean, it's ridiculous how good it's, these guys are. It's them and Otamendi. You forget Literally. about them. And then out of nowhere, like a great white shark breaching from the water. Mm-hmm. They're your guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, these, these, these boys, it is Air Jordan with the Ecuadorian national team. Now, the ceiling for Ecuador at the Copa America. What is yours? So in this ceiling, the bands work. They get a little bit more maturity. Estupinian is in the team. Mm -hmm. And they're getting a lot of set pieces. I think the semis. I think the semis. I agree with you. Yep. And I think a good showing at the semis. If you get all the way to the semis, they're not crashing out like Colombia. They're going all the way. They're going the full 90. It's a game. I don't care who it's against. Well, if the bracket plays out how it should, then Ecuador will play Argentina in the semifinals. And I I think for this current Ecuador side, in this current Argentine side, it's too big of an ask. It, it would be the greatest victory in Ecuadorian history. To me, it would. You beat the defending champions and the defending World Cup champions in a Copa America a tournament where you are historically booty cheeks. I think that would classify as their biggest win ever. I think, but it again, would. I, even if even if it comes I'm, down I'm to a casual. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just a casual. 
I'm a casual. Yeah. I mean, I'm literally I, a Independiente Ultra, bro. Like, I know how the Ecuadorians gonna feel about this jersey in the comments. <laughs> um, I'm you, right you, there with you guys. Let us have said it better. Yeah, we want to hear your opinions. Throw it in there. We're ready. I want to hear. I want to hear them. Oh, yep. absolutely. Hey, I better yep, see how yep. the comments. Y'all, y'all brought the heat the last couple of times. Usually, I'm able to like stay out of the comments. Not necessarily stay out, but I'll respond. I'll like a bunch of uh, comments and stuff. But I, I, y'all, y'all got me. Y'all got me heated. I got triggered a couple of videos ago. I left like a you whole did. paragraph response, and I was like, "Why did I do that? Why did it I?" Was do hilarious. That? It was. I think I texted you about it too, and I was like, "And you were like, why did you? <laughs> why?" I was like, "I don't know," but it pissed me off. Bro. So good work. Keep it coming. I was just looking down like Mufasa, bro, just watching all the chaos unfold. Um, and speaking of chaos, dude, we got to talk about – let's go to Mexico, dude. We're taking it to my team. Um, so Mexico, coming into the Copa America, there's some bad vibes around this team. We'll talk about that a little more later. Um, historically, they are a pretty successful team at the Copa America. We made the semifinals five of our ten appearances but in our last five Copa Americas, we've only made the semis once. And that was back in 2007. In the last three Copa Americas, 2016, 2015, and 2011, we finished last in the group twice and suffered the most humiliating defeat in Mexican national team history, 7-0 against the Chileans at the Centenario. Now, players to watch for this Mexican side. I'm going to take one. And I'm going to say that this is maybe a little bit of a hot take, but I'm going to highlight Luis Chavez. And I'm going to say that if Luis Chavez disappears and becomes a fantasma like he did against the U.S. in the Nations League, Mexico is absolutely finished. We need this man who's got four goals, three assists, and 30 games from Mexico. We need this man to have a good tournament. Mexico with a subpar not not even not even average like with a with an average or below Luis Chavez is going out in the group stage of this Copa America. I think he is that important. I think he's the best set piece taker in this group bar none. And I think Mexico is going to need one moment of magic from him. I don't know if it's a free kick directly, I don't know if it's a it's a beautifully placed corner kick or or a cross. This man's left foot which is kissed by God is going to be the key to Mexico advancing out of the group. He is my number one player to watch, actually, for Mexico. I've been hitting all the big names, so I'm going to throw something a little bit out of left field. I want Chino. Memocho. <laughs> Memocho. Um, no, I want Chino. I want Chino. I want him. I love that. I want him. I love especially that. Especially after their... Especially, especially after w the way that they lost the last game, I, I need him. I need him. You need a dog. You need somebody out there to breathe life into this, right? This man is sitting at home dreaming of the Copa America. He is hungry. He's hungry to prove himself. He's hungry to put on the shirt. He wants that Aztec plate armor, that scale mail oh, that you yeah. guys have. Oh, and he would look good in it. That beautiful hair flowing in the breeze. Come on. Not even the breeze. The wind could be still. It'd still be flying because he's running so much. It's him. It's him. I need him. I want him. He brings life and uh, competence, a competitive attitude, and I think he leads by example. We haven't seen many examples of this, unfortunately. For whatever reason, he's just not a mainstay. But immediately yeah. I see that, and I'm like, that's – that's a player for the people. That's a player that, okay, maybe he doesn't give you like incredible performances in practice, but he's going to go out and he doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care where you're playing. He doesn't care the circumstances of the game. You're getting 110% out of him if he laces his boots. Full stop. That is the Copa America mode. That is the Copa America mentality. That is what you need to be competitive at this tournament. And mm -hmm. it's the lifeblood of it. That's why this is so entertaining. That's what I come in here and I, I hum and haw and huff and haw about all this stuff because that's what you like to see. That's why this is entertaining. We don't have the technicality of the Europeans. We don't have the logistics of the Europeans. We don't have the money. We don't have the organization. We don't have any of that. Okay. Yep. We've got desire. We've got desire and competence and, and just, I mean, an animosity that you just love to see. It makes entertaining football, beautiful storylines. All you March Madness simps, this is you. 
This is you right here. This is your guy. This is the dog. So let's get him in. Let's quit. Let's let's quit BSing. Let's quit playing. Dude, Come on. I'm I'm done. I'm done with I, it. I I completely agree. He is a fearless player in Mexico fearless. is so soft in many parts of the pitch. And I'm going to say this right now. No team has ever made a run at the Copa America being soft. It's never, never happened. And it never will. Peru did make a Copa America final under Gareca being soft. The US men's national team back in 2016 did make a semifinal being soft. You need to go out there and you need to be willing to tear your ACL or someone else's ACL for the badge. And with Mexico, I see a lot of just soft ass jellyfish looking mofos with no spine and no desire. And you know what? Damn, you got me rolling on this one. I've been seeing some disrespect towards Chino Huerta online. I don't know if that's because he plays for Pumas and y'all are like America simps or whatever, but y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. We need a player, especially out left, with the directness and the tenacity of Chino Huerta. Is he going to make the, the right pass every single time? No. But who is? Piojo, are you shitting me? Antuna, are you, are you for real? No, y'all got me pissed off. I'm seeing this man get dragged despite him. He could be going up against Araujo from Uruguay and Barcelona. He doesn't give a shit. He's going to take him on. He's not going to win every single time. No winger wins every single time. At least he's nope. trying. And you're right. He leads by example. I would say we have like Johan Vasquez and Alvarez, dogs on the team. Dogs. I, I, I don't know where the rest are. And I would like to have one in our attack. Can we please get one dog in the front three? When I see Chino Huerta, it reminds me of a young DePaul, the way that he gets after it. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about making those mistakes. Like, you want to talk about games of runs. I I think I mentioned baseball on here all the time. They're very, very, they get psyched out, right? They get the, the yips, right? They get the yips. It's a game of runs, right? When you're hot, you're hot. When you get the yips, it's like, oh, I'm kind of psyched out. Let's send him down to the minors to get his get his head right. This is a man who's unaffected by that. DePaul loses, you know, having girlfriend issues during the World Cup and an injury. He's like, I'm not worried. I'm not done. Throw me in. I'll play injured. I'll play with those mm-hmm. I miss you texts on my phone. I'm on it. I got it. I'm unaffected. My job is here. My job is now. That's Chino Huerta. Mm-hmm. That's you know what. Yes. Get him in. The sense of entitlement that these other guys, you know, run through here, right? I I, I can't I can't stand it. The Mexican fan base deserves more. Maybe not when y'all make it all those chants, but the Mexican fan base deserves more. The the Mexican, not the FA. They don't deserve anything. They deserve well, I don't even want to say what they deserve. This is I don't want to get no other no other fan base uses the P word during their chants, right? I haven't heard that a (laughs) single time in my travels through South America. It's been family friendly. No one's ever said anything. In fact, they actually uh, at at the Bomaneda, they actually clapped when San Lorenzo scored. They actually got a standing ovation. I'm just the opposing saying the, team. the volatile and nature then, of the Mexican fan base can be toxic. And then actually, we talked about that. Actually, Edison Cavani put a gold crown on the goal scorer's head, thanked him for his service. That was what happened in Argentina when Wipe I went boots off. to a game. He literally hey. kissed the ground. Y'all, y'all want to hear more about Argentina? It's only in Mexico where we video. have toxic fandom. It's the only place in Mexico where I never slurs said that. are shouted. I never, no, I no, never this isn't for that. you. This isn't okay. for you. This All is for those dumb morons I see on Twitter who are like, oh, my God, can Mexico not – well, can they not enter the 21st century? Blah, blah, blah. No, like, the the holier-than-thou, the holier-than-thou folks out there. It's no, disgusting, you, you, bro. The entire movement, Y'all first of all – me off. The entire movement is propagated by the United States and Canada because we are significantly more progressive, right? Thank you. Which I agree with, but you can exactly go over to – um. Yeah, Argentina or Mexico or, I mean, even Italy. If you want to throw in one of the snobby, fancy Europeans who are also, you know, holier than thou, you can't go over there. Spain, look at what they're doing to Vinicius. This is rampant everywhere. It's rampant everywhere. I don't even remember what the point is before this, but Mexico deserves a player like Chino Huerta. The fan base yeah. deserves it. Yeah, to get, okay? to, to get off the chant and get back back to the players. Because we yeah. can. I'll, because I'll get on that soapbox. Let's go. We, oh, we, I'll I go mean, for we're all, 45 minutes about 45 how these mofos. Minutes. No, 
do not understand the language. You're trying yeah. to interpret and translate a language you do not even speak. You waste of space. But anyways, Chino Huerta, it's a phenomenal shout. I love that. The crazy thing is, man might not even play. But man I would, might not even make the roster. Not even might not starting. Even make the roster, bro. Yeah. He might not Welcome even to Mexico. Bench. Unreal. Yeah. Are we getting into positive yeah. and neg- negatives on that? I, I just got a real quick. I, we have to mention Santiago Jimenez. Again, yeah. I don't want to go long on this because he might not play, but he is Mexico's most dangerous attacking player. He has cooled off substantially for in the air division with his club form, but there's not a world where Henry Martin is a starter in three games and Mexico advances. There's not. You can be the biggest America simp, and I know a lot of y'all mofos are, but if Henry Martin starts three games, it is group stage. I hope I hope you like Martin enough to see Mexico go home early. That's all I want to say. If you're okay with that, to see him stick his tongue out and try to flex on people, if that's what you want to see at, at the expense of Mexico getting one point in the group stage, fine by me. But I, I'm not in that camp. That's not how I'm built. Okay, y'all keep that on. You're going to have to do that in the team photo on the plane because it's going to be the first one out. They're going to have... They're going to have a lot of time on the tarmac. Yep. Oh, my gosh. And uh, last player I want to very, very quickly talk about, Chucky Lozano. Chucky. I'm going to highlight him because I don't even want to talk about him, really. But the one thing I just want to say is the narrative that he's living off his goal against Germany at the World Cup, to me, is so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so untrue. This man has a lot of great moments for the national team. And most of the time, he's playing with absolute scrubs. And he's not Neymar's level. He's not a Di Maria. So, like, he doesn't have the individual talent to overcome poor teammates. He's not on that level, but he's still the talisman and still arguably the face of this team. It's probably Edson Alvarez now, especially with the move to the Prem. But make no mistake, no Chucky Lozano, if he doesn't start at this Copa America, we're in trouble. And I do think he's got at least one more big moment left with this national team. And I'm looking forward to what that is. Things that we that we like about Mexico, you want to go? Yeah. Um, I Perfect. think the first, you want to go with uh, with hard facts. They've got two of these teams number. They've got Venezuela and they've got Jamaica. They've got them both. This is this is my last like crazy stat. I could not believe my eyes when I saw this. When do you think the last time Mexico lost to Venezuela was? And let's take into account what they were before this really nice run of form that they have and this new team. When do you think the year? I just want to say, leave a like on the video for all these facts we're dropping. And number two, I believe it was 1973, wasn't it? Not that bad. 1982. Okay. Still I insane. knew it was more than 40 years. Insane. And it's not like they've had a lack of games. I think I think it was like 18 plus. We play them a lot. We play, we play them a lot. Venezuela a lot for some reason. We love a Venezuela. For some game. reason. And look, back in the day, the last 10 years, yeah, I would love a Venezuela game too. I would love it too. But ever since... That last Copa America, something's happening. Something's happening. Even recently, they're looking better. But I think, I think that Mexico still has that. I think that they still have that. And and we already talked about, we already talked about uh, uh, Jamaica, right? It's gonna be a bloodbath. 11, Eleven wins against Jamaica. Eleven wins against Jamaica this millennium. That's it. They got two of these teams' numbers, and I don't think yeah. you guys are not doing well right now i don't think you're doing so poorly that you're not still going to be a competitive tournament team and when you turn on that competitive tournament style there's something in that aztec blood that just gets up for it and i think that that's going to let you go the distance against these guys because jamaica and venezuela i don't think they're turning anything venezuela to a much lesser degree right but jamaica's not turning anything around anytime soon and venezuela potentially i think you guys got the pedigree though Dude, that's the hilarious part about some of this Copa dialogue is like people will literally bet their house that Jamaica are going to have a performance that has never before been observed in the history of the national team. But God forbid, I say Mexico is going to finish second in the group in advance. 
God forbid, I think a team that's made five Copa America semifinals in 10 appearances, God forbid, I think that team, you know, a team that had the longest streak next to Brazil of advancing from the group stage of the World Cup before the previous one, God forbid, I think that team can turn it on for the Copa America, or I'm just a simp. I'm no. just biased. God forbid. No. But but Jamaica, no, I should have Jamaica in the final because Leon Bailey's on fire for Aston Villa. You can't reason with these people. You really you can't. can't. I you mean, can't, and, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't waste your time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I mentioned a positive t- tenure in the Copa America. It has been ugly recently. I'm not going to lie, but this is not a Canada situation. This is not a Costa Rica situation. This is not a Jamaica where we don't really know how to navigate a successful Copa America tournament. Mexico knows how to do it. It's in our blood. Yes, it's been a while, but part of that is because we sent the goddamn B team in 2015. I'll never forgive the Federation for that. That was an absolute embarrassment. But anyways, please don't let me get started on that. And the last positive thing, because really I don't have too many positives about Mexico, but it's the talent. And there is talent on this team. It just needs to be utilized. And I'm sick of people acting like all of a sudden Venezuela, like a Mexico-Venezuela combined 11 is like nine Venezuelans. Chill out. Chill out. And stop disrespecting Liga Mekis. It's still a top 10 league in the world. It's number 10. But stop acting like we're the Qatari Stars League. They, ha- they handled into Miami. They handled into Miami. Let's talk about they it. Handled Look. They handled everybody. They handled everybody. I love Inter Miami. I love Messi. I'm gonna follow him till till I die, till he dies forever. Right? He's an icon. That was a, a stamp. Him, but yeah. That was a, that was a stamp for me. That was a stamp. I was like, all right, something's got to happen here, and it didn't. It didn't, and I think that's very telling for the MLS, and I think it's very telling for Liga MX. Yeah, but. I mean, according to Usman's national team Twitter, I thought Liga Mekis was finished. I thought it was too. Anyways, things that I don't like. No. Whole. You? You or me? I'm going to take one that I think you won't take. Okay. And that is Mexico's atrocious record against Conmebol lately. Let me just run through the last 10 results. Okay? Let me Please just let me do this real quick. And I'm not counting any game. That's outside of a FIFA date where we play like Ecuador's fourth string. I'm not interested in those. None of those were counted in this, okay? 2-0 loss to Argentina at the World Cup. For that, we had a 3-2 loss to Colombia. 1-0 win against Peru, the worst Peru side in a decade. 1-0 loss to Paraguay, Jesus Christ. 0-0 draw to Ecuador. 3-1 beatdown. By Uruguay, the game that you... Oh, excuse me. I think it was 3 nothing, not 3-1. 3-0 beat down by Uruguay that we watched. You can find the match recap on the channel. 2-0 lost to Brazil. 7-0 lost to Chile. 1-1 draw against Venezuela. And a 3-1 win against Uruguay, thank God, in 2016. That's two wins, two draws, six losses in our last 10. We're falling behind. Falling behind. It is what it is. It is what it is. And we've talked about the talent on the team. My negative is the organization. I think you can point directly towards them. The fact that they feel so beholden, I don't know to who, to themselves, to the fans. I don't know what, but it's just such a volatile, like, environment there. There's no time for any correction. Like, say what you want about, like, situations in clubs like Manchester United over there, but at least they're keeping managers for longer now, right? It felt like a rotary wheel for a while, but... I mean, they're keeping guys yeah. for a year now, keeping guys for two years. Okay, fantastic. Give somebody some time. Give somebody some time to build up like a personality, for instance. Because, yeah, we talk about talent. Mexico is the biggest Spanish-speaking nation in the world. I feel like nobody really comprehends that enough. Spanish. Spanish, a massive language, a massive culture in the world. Food, language, literature, romance, all of the above. Spanish is very central to that. They are the largest nation that speaks it. The Latin culture lives and breathes football. Mexico is the largest propagator of that, and they don't have a competitive football team. It's not because of lack of players. Physically impossible. The culture is Or interest massive. or money. And there's a massive player base. Or interest or money. None of that is the issue. So what is it? 
maybe it's the thing that we've been talking about for the last couple of years, the last few years, our entire lives, maybe. Yeah. The FA. It's the FA. You can't, you will not let a manager get his feet set, right? You're not supporting, I mean, what? You support Tata Martino. Okay. Who else? You're not, you're not going to spend a bag to get a real manager in here that speaks the language. You're just going to keep cycling through these guys. An Argentine shows up, so you bring another Argentine in. You think that's a, a, a good idea? With losing against uh, uh, Argentina in the World Cup, the animosity that was there, international celebrities getting involved, a beef between, um, what is it, Canelo and Messi. So you're going to bring another Argentine in? That man was doomed to fail from the start. Doomed to fail from the start. Find something. Get your players ready. Create an environment where these guys can thrive. Some incentives, at the very least, for them to do well. Don't don't give them any everything on a silver platter. Change up the domestic league. Something, anything, anything. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. They don't have it, and it seems like at this point they're refusing to do it or change anything about it. And I think that's because of money. It has to be. There's no other explanation for me, really. Of course. But I mean, at this point. I feel like you're going to be hamstrung. Like there's literally no room for advancement until, I mean, you want to talk about things being stuck in the stone age. Let's move away from, uh, you know, <laughs> progressive ideals. Let's talk about business structure here. Let's talk about, you know, fostering youth development in the national team. Okay. You've Dude. got studs, send them somewhere where they could progress. Santi Jimenez probably sold more jerseys than, than the Mexican Federation knows what to do with. Get him out of Liga Mekis and send him over. Send him over. See, dude, I'm, I'm going to disagree. I, I think in on one very specific section of what you said, the FMF should be studied in the way in which they monetize. Y'all think that microtransactions are annoying in 2K? The, the 2K wishes they were the FMF, bro. The way they yeah. just suck in money from the fan base. And on one hand, I want to blame the fans sometimes because it's like, can y'all stop going to the games? I got invited by a very good friend of mine to go see Brazil, Mexico. I said, piss off. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not paying $200. It wasn't that expensive. It was like $150 to watch some booty cheeks players who aren't even one of the best 11 players for my national team go out there and play Brazil in a friendly and get smacked. And even if they don't get smacked, who cares? I'm just playing into the hands of the devil. You mentioned something which I literally just call, call la equacion de muerte, the equation of death. Insane pressure plus average talent equals mala vibras, bad vibes. There's no escaping it. We have we have top three pressure at this tournament. It's literally us, Argentina, and probably Brazil. And you we got are on paper the eighth best team probably at this tournament. Top three pressure for the eighth best team? For bottom math, half talent. Math, yeah. That math does yes. not add up. And that is, it's not because Mexican, it's not because Mexican people are just like inherently more toxic. It's because there's so freaking many of them. And there's so many of them. And they're sick. Life. They are sick they're and tired sick. of the way that this is going for, for yes. their entire lives. For their entire lives. Well, maybe early 2000s. We had some good vibes. I would say I would say 2002 was the beginning. Yep, I, I would I would say it was. Um, to not go off on the the federation, I'm also going to switch cams because I think mine would be a little lighter if I switch the other cam real quick. Um, yeah, it looks a little better because like, we got about 15 minutes of, of daylight left here. Last negative I also want to say about Mexico, which is very very important. Um, the only way that I see us being successful this Copa America is to play sit back counter football and one i don't know if jim lozano is going to do that and two i don't even know if he's going to start the players that could even play in that style you know and three i don't know if the press is going to accept that and i don't know if the fans are going to accept that either that if we want to do something we're going to have to play like canada y are y'all ready for that what do you want more you want possession football and two points or you want to sit back and make the quarters what do y'all want let me know in the comments. But we're not out possessing these teams running up the scoreboard. No. I think I think it's not gonna I happen. Think, I think for the first time this video, I'm gonna have to take the side of the uh the Mexican fans. 
they will have faith in that and they'll be confident in that style of play when results happen. Any result. Any result. I'll, I'll change my whole footballing philosophy if it gets me a result. Are you kidding me? Let's get it. Let's get let's get a defining win for this Copa America. Let's take some points off of Ecuador. You take some points off of Ecuador playing counterattacking football? Sure, I'm sold all the way. Let's go. Let's run. Let's do it. I'll, I'll back it the whole time. But I think the most important thing that you said is, is Jimmy Lozano going to set you up for that? I don't think it's on his radar. I, I, don't, I don't know if he can bring the guys on that need to be brought on. You can't even get the vibes guys right in the locker room. No. We may no, get you, DeAndre you even... Yedlin now. Should be light work for you guys. What's going on? Dude, I mean, the, the way that the U.S. ushered in the next generation is something that I, I still dream about and pray that Mexico would do literally on a nightly basis. I think I said that was my last negative, but of course, the biggest one with this team is that I don't think we're going to learn much from this Copa America because we're not going to give a single young player minutes, man. I can guarantee you they're not getting minutes. They're not getting minutes. We're going to roll with the same... Vaca Sagradas, the sacred cows that have been in this national team for way too long. And I'm going to be sad on the live streams. Hit subscribe. We're still going to do the streams, but I'm just trying to temper my expectations now. We'd be lucky if Fidel Ambri has got minutes, like genuinely. I mean, Sebastian Cordova, hell no. Hell no, he ain't getting minutes. Marcel Ruiz, good luck. Did you get that? None of the, these guys ain't playing. They might be included on the squad. They not playing. It's going to be the same old, same old. Do you have another negative or should we just go to Florida ceiling? We're really let's on the go. clock now. I got 15 Florida, minutes. Florida ceiling. Sun. Florida ceiling. Let's rip it. Floor, I got group stage. Group Genuinely. stage. Maybe, maybe two points. Do you think that's their floor? Two draws. Two draws, yeah. Do you think, I think one they draw? Get a win. I think they get a win. Okay. Their floor. Okay. I, don't, I don't see a way that they're not beating Venezuela or Jamaica. One of them. Okay. One of them. Okay. I am just thinking like disaster situation because Jamaica did ties to the Azteca last time 2-2. But I don't think they're ready for this. I, I, I think Copa America is a different beast. I think you guys are pedigreed. I, I just can't put all those negatives into one and say that the boys aren't going to get up for one game. And I think True. depending on when the match is, I, th I think they got at least three points. Okay. If they don't... So if they don't, things are a whole lot worse than even I expected. And you know I'm a hater, so. Yeah. Oh, one one point of this Copa, genuine riots in Mexico City. Yeah. Ceiling for this team? Man, I went, I went semifinals. I really did. Oh. I really did. I really did. I do think if they catch Peru or Canada, especially in a quarterfinals, I'm feeling good, man. If we catch Chile, I would have felt a lot better three months ago. And if we catch Argentina, that means Argentina, that either means we won the group and y'all didn't, or y'all won the group and we didn't. And it's it's curtains at that point. Um, but if we can avoid Argentina, I do think it's possible because of how vulnerable the Group A teams are. Not because Mexico's amazing. Yeah. If we were playing Uruguay in the quarters, bro, it's yeah, I think it is done. It's done. I like the but, way you said that, curtains. Yeah, it, it depends on who you play, but I think you make it. I forget how short this tournament is. All right, I'll say the same thing. I'll say the same thing, but I'll, I'll tell you what in addendum to that. I'll, I'll take the exact same take as you. Everything you said is lining up for me with one addendum. They do not deserve the semis. I don't think they do. I don't think I would they agree. deserve it. I would if, agree. If they catch Peru and, and they move on, they don't deserve it. It's because something happened on the other team's end, and it's by – it's their fault that Mexico made it to the semis as opposed to Mexican um, excellence, you know? For, for the most part, of course, not seeing how the match would play out, for the most part, I will agree. And I think that says more about the current state of the national team that we would be beating yeah. versus – Mexico, like 100%. that's because Peru are in the in quicksand. Yes, not because we're back. Correct, one hundred percent. Okay, y'all let us know. Y'all let us know. And the last team we got to talk about are the Venezuelans, the current Cinderellas 
of Conmebol sitting fourth in the table right now. Two wins, three draws, and one loss. They've allowed three goals in six World Cup qualifiers. That's pretty insane. What is also insane is that in 19 Copa Americas, they've made one semifinal, and that was in 2011. They have never finished higher than fourth at the Copa America. To put that into perspective, Honduras have been invited to one Copa America in 2001, and they finished third. So literally in one Honduran campaign, they finished higher than Venezuela ever have in their own tournament. Now, that is just a fact. I'm not saying Honduras is better. Absolutely. Venezuela would would put the beat down, I think, on Honduras right now. But I'm we talked about it way back. Jamaica, Group A. Ecuador, trash at the Copa. They got something to prove. Venezuela, dog water at the Copa. They got something to prove. Mexico ain't done nothing at the Copa since 2007. Starving. But Jamaica's going to win the group with nine points. Anyways, <laughs> Venezuela. Players to watch. You take the first one here. I got Soteldo. Soteldo. Beast. Soteldo's is a beast. He's got what for the uh, for the senior team? I think he's got a pretty decent amount of caps or a pretty decent amount of uh, results and contributions for the youth team, which I was kind of surprised that I didn't hear about him uh, earlier. But maybe that was just the state of Venezuela at the time. But in the senior team, I think he has – Four goals and eight assists in 39 games, yeah, which is pretty solid. A lot of those coming recently, pretty consistent. Yeah. And I think that just speaks for itself. I think that speaks for itself. The fact that he's competitive and competitive against big teams as well, he's not intimidated. It's that uh, the Paul Chino Huerta sort of vibe. I don't care who you are, I'm coming at you. I'm coming at yes. you, and yeah, I'm excited to see what he does. I'm, I'm going to keep that one kind of brief because I think he's still got a lot to prove, and I don't think he has a lot to speak on. But we will be watching his career with great interest. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a very talented player and with a ton of flair. If I'm going like just sauciest players at the Copa America, I think he's inarguably top 10. Like, I mean, I literally wrote down that he's the Venezuelan Kyrie Irving because this man just taking you on off the dribble. That's all he wants to do. Literally, he's like, give me the best fullback in the oppos- opposition team. I'm just going at him time and time again. The, the, the way that he tore up Chile in that 3-0 World Cup qualifier it, is one of the craziest gunmable performances I've seen. Like, the man was possessed. Possessed. And... You know he's got something crazy in the bag for this Copa. You know he does. You hope. You hope. If if he doesn't, Venezuela are in trouble because it's not like they have five guys coming off the bench who no. are just like Soteldo. Like they really need this man to ball out if he's one of the cornerstones. And score some gold. He's one of the cornerstones. Let's not let's not pussyfoot around it. He is one of the cornerstones of this team. Absolutely. They're not the same team without him. And yeah, I I think I think he does something really good here. He's looking to move somewhere else because he's at Gremio right now. Gremio in Brazil. Yeah, he's at Gremio. And I think he makes a move across the pond if he's got a really good um, tournament here. Who knows? You know, Brighton's always looking for offensive players. They'd, they'd be like 26, like he's a dinosaur, I think is what Brighton would say. <laughs> way too old. Um, but no, no, I I do think this guy's electric. He's got actually quite good stats in the Sudamericana and Libertadores as well for different, you know, different teams. Um, and again, going to need a good performance from him if Venezuela are going to do something. Another player that I'm going to highlight is Jose Martinez, the central defensive midfielder who's currently playing for the Philadelphia Union in the MLS, 29 years old, only has 28 caps, but good Lord. In this current World Cup qualifying campaign, I didn't watch him that much for 2022. I can't speak on it. But in this World Cup qualifying campaign, this guy has been so freaking good, dude. Like, and I want to bring this guy up because I feel like Martinez is the perfect embodiment of Venezuela, a.k.a. Thighs Out FC, because half their team wear short shorts. If you look at any offensive stat, he's 40th percentile or worse 
I'm talking passes attempted. I'm talking completion percentage. I'm talking passes longer than 10 yards. I'm talking carries of the ball, touches in the opposition half. It's abysmal. And then you get to the defensive stats and you see where this man's value is. He's good at, he's literally good at two things. Three things, actually. Tackles, blocks, interceptions. He is a bulldog. He is the Venezuelan Tyler Adams. And this is a team in Venezuela, they do not want the ball. They are allergic to possession. And the reason is because they don't have really a creative midfielder. And the midfielders they decide to roll with are destroyers. They're battleships. That's, that's how they set up to play. And that's why they've been so difficult to beat recently. It's because they have some dogs, some hounds in the midfield. And Martinez, I'm not going to say he's like the third best player for Venezuela, like not at all, but he's been a player that stood out to me, especially recently. Like literally I'm watching Venezuela. I'm like, who the hell is that midfielder? And I'm Googling him. I'm like, yo, this plays in the MLS? Like, oh my God, I've never heard of this guy. Has never unimpressed me when I'm watching Vino Tinto. I think that guy, just watch out, man. I mean, I met I'm talking to Mexican fans right now and the Jamaican fans. He's going to be a handful. He's going to be a handful for Luis Chavez. He's going to be a handful for Eric Sanchez. He's going to be a handful for Moises, Kentry Pies. He's going to try to kill Kentry. He's going yeah. to try to kill him. Yeah. Watch out. And he might. Kentry not big. <laughs> Honestly, not big he's, he's, the big, he's the biggest concern for Mexico, I think, um, at, at the rate which, especially in that final that we watched with uh, uh, the United States, the way that Mexico was sort of frazzled when they got to the U.S. men's national team's uh, final third, easily disrupted. And I think having a presence like that man there is going to provide a significant challenge. I think he is going to be the deciding factor um, in who advances, which we can get to that later. But I think he's going to be the key there because if you can disrupt – Mexico's organization in the final third, they're not going to score against you. So all you have to do is get a goal. You get one or two, and I think you're through. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen Mexico get easily frustrated. I mean, Honduras against the United States recently, even against Panama in recent times. Like, again, going back to the just no dogs, but please, God, don't let me talk about Mexico again. Um, speaking of dogs, the biggest thing I love about venezuela is they're a pack of wolves bro they are a pack it's not of wolves. even dog factor no. it's like i was gonna say saber tooth but that's a cat technically what, what's that's like all the, right what's, what's the Hyenas. biggest we're going uh, where, dire, werewolf? dire wolves werewolves Can I yeah dire sure. wolves yeah 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 a, a mythical creature something mythical you didn't wolf. think something you just heard about you didn't think it could happen until you saw it mm-hmm and now you're perplexed. You're looking at the scoreboard. You're down 2-0 in the 15th minute. That's Venezuela. And that's, these guys. That's, that's why we like this team. That's why we bought so hard yes. into them, right? I saw yes. a game with my own eyes, and I was like, oh, my God. No, they're actually doing this. You see the results, and you're like, okay, well, how long can this last? And then it's, oh, okay, so this isn't a run. It's going past 10 games. We're looking at an actual team with good, not only good form, but consistency as well. Like, this isn't spotty. These guys are dangerous. They're holding their own against big teams. Fourth in Comebol qualifying. What's going on here? And it's the attitude. It's the attitude. It's a, it's a team of Chino Huertas. It's a team of guys who are running and dying for the badge and just going off. I, I always talk about that random mystery game, the last game that they played in uh, uh, the Copa America back in, what was it, 2021. Um, I can't explain to you what that phenomenon was on the TV, but I think it was the catalyst for the like this team that they have now. Whatever they're doing, they fed that, and we have the fully grown version of that. We are seeing we are seeing a Venezuelan peak right now, and yeah. it is the attitude that they have. Yeah, dude, they have something that is so valuable in football that a lot of teams don't have in his identity. Everybody identity. has bought in. Miami Heat culture, Pat Riley, Eric Spolster, people always talk about that. That's this current Venezuelan side. You yeah. know, how long is it going to last for? We have no freaking idea. But 
under Batista, their manager, who's Argentine, of course he is. Everybody's Argentine uh, at the managerial level in Colmebol. These guys are legit. They've lost two out of his 12 games in charge. And how many of those 12 games do you think they've conceded more than one goal? Two. Once. Whew. Literally one time, Italy 2-1 in a friendly. That's it. That's it. Took, it. it took European. It took European intervention to do a number on these guys. Wow. Correct. Correct. And away from home as well. I'm, I'm pretty confident saying that if Italy went to Maturin, I don't think they would score two. In fact, I know they would not score two, actually. Y'all can find me in the comments on that if you want. Let me repeat, though. Venezuela might play, might play the ugliest football of any team at the Copa America. I mean, it's them in Bolivia. I'm not even kidding. Panama, in terms of just be the beautiful game, clear of, of Venezuela. Now, it's not that effective. We just saw them get beat down by Mexico and then lose to Jamaica. Pretty football didn't do much for the Panamanians then. Venezuela plays a very pragmatic defensive football. It's, it's tough to find highlights from these games sometimes, but it keeps them in every single match that they're in. Constantly. I don't care if it's England. I don't care if it's Brazil. They're in it. Let's 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 talk about that for a second. Let's talk about this recent renaissance that Conmebol is seeing right now. Right? Brazil's kind of out. out. Yeah, or not. Brazil's not out, but they are not the Brazil that we know. They're not the Brazil that we've been seeing for the last huh, 80 years, right? They are weak. Fall off had to happen eventually, right? Fall off I mean, had to happen eventually. Years. It's not going to be a long one, I assure you, but it is happening, right? We're seeing lots of, of renaissances in national teams. Ecuador is relevant. Peru is falling off with uh, Gareca. Okay, Peru's not that good. Well, now Chile is back on top, right? They're coming up. Uruguay is looking like they're coming into some really good form. We'll see what they can do. We're seeing a renaissance in Comebol right now. And I think that that Venezuelan attitude that they have is indicative of how everything was managed in the before times. And I think it's serving them very well now. They are looking like they want to build a solid presence. This is why I had them as one of the teams with so much to gain this, um, this Copa America, because they can cement themselves here. They can really use this attitude that the Copa America is so well known for, or what I view it as, right? Where you take these top teams, you take these, these giants, you take Italy, you take Argentina, you take Brazil, you take these guys, and you drag them down to your level. You say, whatever you're doing on the pitch, I do not care who you are. It can be the ugliest brand of football, but you're not doing that tiki-taka BS in my house. And I love that, that, that like no excuses attitude, that like no BS, no pussyfooting, no playing around attitude that they have, I think is going to serve them so well, so well. I don't care if they're ugly games, those results. It's just like what I was saying with Mexico. If you want to play counterattacking ball, fine. If it gets us the result, I do not care. You could sit with the back 11 and if you're going to make the semis, I'll ride the whole way. I'll set my team up like that on FIFA. I do not care. I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. Play that ugly football. Drag them down to your level. Suffocate them. Do not let them play their open style. Frankly, I'm scared. If 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 we get a, a Venezuela against Argentina, that's nerve-wracking to me. I think we're still that's too good. That's a big game right now. Yeah. That is, that is a massive game. I get it. But I think that the Conmebol Copa America is unlike any other tournament in the world. I think we're seeing a renaissance, but I think that Venezuela is sticking to the old attitude, and I love it. New players, new drive, new coach, old attitude, and I'm so here for it. I'm bought in. I think it will serve them really, really well. You are definitely bought in more than than I am. I, I do really respect this, this Venezuelan side, and make no mistake, no mistake, this team could make the semifinals. Could absolutely make the semifinals. Like they, they said, could, it's going to be an ugly beat. run, but it could happen. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, hey, it's going to be ugly if Mexico make a run. It's going to be ugly if Ecuador make a run. Really, Group B is the most disgusting collection of football teams and approaches you could ever put together in a tournament. It's I mean, this is diabolical. It's disgusting. It's graphic. <laughs> I mean, it's something that nobody should have to watch. Yet, like I said, we're doing a stream for every godforsaken match so Th this is this is the part Trump. where you know if you're watching your first r-rated movie with your dad this is when he leans over and he covers your eyes this is it yeah. you watch all the other games but this is when he covers your eyes he's like you don't need this you don't need to know about this yet yes yeah when you see four midfields completely unable to hold possession of the ball regardless of opponent then you're going to be like this looks it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a CONCACAF away qualifier when it's Haiti versus Nicaragua. I mean, that is how ugly this is gonna get at certain yeah. points. And we, this is the one the Europeans prepared. the Europeans are gonna clip this and they're gonna be like Copa America is a trash tournament. Yeah. Oh app you dude, you're spot on. They're gonna take the stats from the Ecuador Venezuela nil nil game at the Copa where there was four total shots and one on target. Yeah. And they're gonna talk about how much better the European refined football is without a doubt dude without a doubt and i mean f it i don't i don't need or care or desire the respect of the europeans anyways so they can think whatever the hell they want i'm still watching the copa over the euros any freaking day of the any freaking week, day dude. it's not I'll any take freaking it. day come on Sign me up. i don't even, even have to think about it literally don't even have to think about it um things that i don't like about venezuela yeah. as you can tell the sun's already down so i have to do this quick I see this team in serious trouble if they go down. I'm not so sure they have the play style and the personnel to chase a game. In fact, I know that they don't. They might be able to do what they did against Brazil, which was historic and never before done, by the way, by drawing the game. How many more times is light, lightning strike for this Venezuelan side? I don't know. Their key to success is not conceding. If they concede, if they concede two, it's over. It is over. They're, They're not, not coming, coming back, back against anybody. That. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If Jamaica's up 2-0 against Venezuela and Jamaica get to start hitting them on the counter, Jamaica will score third. That is what's going to happen yeah. at this Copa America. So the key to them is just bunker down World War I trench warfare. If, that, if the line is breached, they are done. That's my biggest, that's my biggest negative for them is like they're so dependent. They're so dependent on the clean sheet. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, there's zero wins in their last five, which is concerning. And they've only won three in the last ten, and that was against Chile, Paraguay, and Guatemala. Those are my negatives. Those are my negatives. They've also scored. They've also scored more than one goal twice under Batista as the manager. And one of those games was the Chile 3 0 win, which I want to say they were they down to, to nine men or 10 men in that game? It was at least one red. At least one red. I think it might have been nine. Why does that sound like it might have been nine? It's don't, dude, don't, it was don't nine hold me to that. Somebody, somebody correct us, but I feel like it was nine. I feel like I saw that and I was like, what is going on? See, that's going to be one of those comments where like I always see somebody who will correct like a completely unimportant mistake that we yeah. made you know we'll be like yeah back in 2013 so and so beat so and so they'll be like actually it was 2014 i'm like that doesn't change the argument at all thank you for just yeah. saying that but yeah yeah like do you disagree sure. with what we said or no the, i don't know the, I don't the know. point still stands it's semantics how do you respond yeah I, you don't it, it is it is semantics it is semantics this team doesn't score goals and they are far better at home and they are away and they're going to a Copa America in the United States where against Mexico they will be the away team yeah. against Jamaica they'll be the home team and against Ecuador they'll probably be the home team though it depends where the game is being played if it's I don't know northeast yeah the amount I of Venezuela jerseys I, or Ecuador jerseys that I see lately I'd be betting on Ecuador yeah but the, the point is again they kind of need Maturin to, to really, like, yeah. feed off the crowd, and I don't think they're going to get a crowd in more than one game at this group stage. No. Let's see. Do I have anything else? I think 
the last big negative I have is, again, the lack of depth, especially going forward. Yeah. I think they have a lot of athletes that they can put on, but, like, they're still kind of dependent on Rondon to score goals. You know what I'm saying? And, like, the, the man is not playing a full 93 games in a row at the group stage. Someone's going to have to come in for him, and I don't know who that is. I, I literally don't. Yeah, the the amount of options, their their weapons that they've got in the armory, it's looking a little limited. It's looking a little limited. So you, I mean, you have to hope that their game right. plan goes according to plan, right? They score early and they're able to bunker down so that your boy Rondon doesn't have to do that much running. They still have a trebuchet in the national armory. Yeah, not looking good. Not and right next to a, a javelin. <laughs> Like it's, it still it can still technically get the job done. It's just not optimal. You know what I'm not saying? Not optimal. Yeah, not optimal. Um, should I also talk about how I think the clout, which is a dangerous drug, you don't want to OD on the clout. I think we, yeah, it's we, getting we, a little we, high. We can say we can say, and and I'm even self aware about this for once. The clout can be a little much for whatever reason. People are taking this team and running with it. They weren't on that train mm -hmm. with Peru. It caused Gareca to go out. We all picked Venezuela. Venezuela's getting a little too, I wouldn't say the players necessarily, but the hype that I'm seeing surrounding it, it can be a dangerous thing. Don't let it get you too high up in the clouds. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. Because yeah. if you if, if you partaking in that a little bit too much, next thing you know, you got players and clubs. You got bottle service the night before. No bueno. No, it went. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, I, as soon as we're in a world where people are expecting six points from a Venezuelan side at a Copa America during the group stage, that's when I take a step back and I say, I think we've all had too much to drink tonight. Four points would be a good group stage for Venezuela. Yeah. That's not disrespectful. No, 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 no. Let's get into our group standings, dude. Let's this. get into our group standings. Let's wrap it up. God, this is this is a disaster. It's an absolute disaster on my end. Oh no! What if you got done? first? <laughs> first, who's uh, going through? Yeah. Oh, you give me you, the you layup. Give me your one. All right, my one is Ecuador. How many points? I'll start by saying they should take nine. I think they take. They won't though. I don't. No think they way won't. they take nine. Max, they get seven. And I think I'm going to go with the max. I think I'm going to go seven. I'm going the max too. I think they get seven. seven. Yeah. And honestly, God help them if they don't. God but help I'm, them if they don't. I'm ripping Ecuador, bro. If they don't win this group, I'm ripping them out of love. You know, out it's of love. like yeah. It's like chastising your son. A father's disappointment. Literally what I was going to say. Oh, come on now. With, for the oop. And boom. Yeah, it's dude. a father's come disappointment on, right Chris, there. Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, dude. Dead ball TV. Hit subscribe. I'll throw it down. Hey, I'm no. redhead too. <laughs> hey, that did work. And I'm actually, never mind. Um, in second place. <laughs> You're not that ethnically ambiguous. You got like four <laughs> or five. Ooh, not that one. Gus is going back on. All right. In second and I have low conviction, bro. I got Mexico with four points. Okay. Yeah. Literally exact same. Exact same. And I say that because of the Copa pedigree. I want I want Venezuela to go through. I'm bullish on them. I had to take a reality check after the last video. I was really sitting down and thinking about it. And what really got me was comparing Venezuela to Ecuador. I was like, okay, I'm super bullish on Venezuela. And I'm saying all these things and I'm feeling all these things really was the uh, the important part. I was feeling this way. But then I thought mm -hmm. like, okay, I compare that to Ecuador. Something doesn't add up here. Something doesn't add up here. There's a power balance that we've got to stick to that I've got to adhere to. I got to trust my gut, but I also got to trust what I've seen. I got to trust my eyes and my brain here. And Venezuela just doesn't stack up to Ecuador in a way that they will be able to uh, pass right behind them in second. Not with Mexico being as pedigreed as they are, not with them being able to get up for tournaments, right? We were feeling similarly uh, uh, bearish on um, Mexico going into the World Cup and 
they did not have a bad showing. It was not a travesty. You can get as angry about that Argentina game as you want. Mexico didn't lose that because Mexico was bad. Mexico lost that because Argentina's that good. They replay that messy goal for a reason. Nobody stops that. Nobody stops that. He did the same thing against Netherlands. Same thing against Netherlands. It just happened to be a pass. It is what it is. It don't, is what it don't is. Don't get I me think... started on the Poland game, but I sort Listen, of agree. Mexico has power level as well. They've got standing. They can get up when they need to. And I think that their experience in this tournament and honestly, the attitude of their fans, the fact that it's in the United States and the fact that Mexico's used to that environment, both the Copa America environment and playing in the United States, I think that's going to, that's going to do enough for them. And they've got depth. They've got depth. If something goes wrong, They've got other options, options that may be better than the starters, if we're being completely honest with Jimmy. So we I, have I'm, depth, I'm bro, but I just I just don't think most of it gets called up. I mean, we're going to see the Correct. Nations League again where we have Luis Romo on the bench and it's just an embarrassment. But, but it's more than Venezuela is what I'm getting at. I'm going to say it again. If we're doing a combined Mexico-Venezuela, I don't know how many Venezuelans get in. Two max. And that that's not that's not bias. Like Venezuela play better than the sum of their or yeah, better than the sum of their parts. Better Am I saying that right? Their parts, yeah, I think so. I've been in so Latin America for so long, I've forgotten my own language. Um, Finally, I'm trying to say they outperform their individuals. Yeah. Anyways, Mexico still has the better players. They have a better historical performance. They're playing at home. So the pressure is on Mexico as well. Like it's a bigger, it's a much bigger disaster for us to finish third than for Venezuela. Like, n- sin duda, no freaking doubt. Venezuela, sort of playing with house money, sort of. And I do have Venezuela in third, and I have them with three points. I've got them with, I got them with three points as well. I think. I'll take them with four. I'll take them with four. Okay. I actually have them three draws. I think they will draw every three game. Three draws? Yeah. Yeah. I think they get a win. I think they get a win. Against Jamaica? I'm a little nervous about it, but I think it's against Jamaica. I think Jamaica's just really I mean, big, but their athleticism can only get them so far. I think Venezuela is going to be such a pain in the butt to play against. Yeah, they're too fluid in their organization. I don't think Jamaica holds up, but yeah, Venezuela three, and I think Jamaica, y'all, rock bottom. Sorry, shout out to Ravens Medical. I know you're you're big big Jamaica guy, but I can't I can't see it. I I can no, see. I got nothing. one point, one point. They get a draw. That's it. Which would be a historical Copa America for Jamaica. Yeah, it would. You got to start somewhere. You do. You really do. Yeah. I mean, yo, the look for CONCACAF, if Jamaica somehow get like four points and Mexico also gets, you know, four or five. Oh, CONCACAF's back, baby. CONCACAF's back. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I mean, put some respect on the region, dude. I just don't see that happening. Yeah. Agreed. Defies logic. So I think I think a massive Ecuador. This this is a topic for a different tournament uh, or a different video. We don't have time, but I wonder what the, who where the refs going to be from. I think that's going to dictate so much of this tournament, and I really don't know. Both federations, I imagine. Both federations, I imagine. Those games are going to be night and day. Those games are going to be night and day. Whew. We'll see, man. Like I said, guys, I think I've said it nine times in this video. We're doing streams for every game. So hit subscribe. Yes, that means Venezuela, Jamaica is getting a live stream. Okay? You ain't going to find that on YouTube, baby. Hit subscribe. Okay? And drop your thoughts down below in the comments. We'll be going for two hours. So surely there's at least one thing we've said you don't completely agree with. Otherwise, our ball knowledge, I guess, is just 4,000, which I've been trying to tell you all for months. Maybe we're infallible. I think we are. You know, I actually had an English guy tell me I had ball knowledge the other day. 
he was like, my name is Harvey. And I was like, like Harvey Barnes. And he was like, you know, ball. That was a conversation. You were like, come on, come on now. I said, oh, you want another one? Harvey Elliott. He said, damn, you <laughs> I got good. two for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's big. That's big from an Englishman. That's big from an Englishman. Yeah. Yeah. It's a true story. It's a true story. <laughs> so I, we are, we are putting respect not only on Conma Bowl, but on American ball knowledge here at Dead Ball TV. Doing God's work. Maybe we'll, I'll take up the cloth next week. <laughs> it's only a matter Father of time. Father Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I, if I keep dropping those biblical references like I was talking about Gareca, it might be time. We're going to hit you with the, you go, you're you going to go to Mexico. You're going to be Padre Jacobo. <laughs> Padre Jacobo, yeah. The f- as soon as I get an Uber, they're always like, De que? And I'm like, is it that obvious? And they're like, your name's Jack. And I'm like, fair. <laughs> fair. He's all like, right. that name doesn't exist here. And I'm like, yeah, all right. You got me there. Yeah, I'm from Texas. Yeah, I got nothing to say about that. And they're like, hey, is Chino? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're going to end the video there. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure you smash the like button. Group C coming on the way. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss when that drops. Also, check us out. Social media links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you want to talk about the Copa America with other people here on Dead Ball TV, you can jump in the Discord and we will have a channel in the Discord all about the Copa. You can talk about Venezuela. You can gas up Jamaica as much as you want. You can talk about how tim ream is world class i don't care what you want to do but if it's related to the copa go check that out links for everything in the description and give the podcast a five-star rating y'all are awesome we appreciate you for watching or listening and we'll see y'all in the next one